Forest Pack 7 includes new library management tools that with one click allow you to add selected objects to the library, collect the necessary assets, build a material library and generate thumbnails. Here's how it works. First of all, it's now possible to open the library browser without a Forest Pack object. Just click on the library browser button on the Forest Pack toolbar. If you prefer, of course you can still open it from the forest object, either from the object settings in the create menu or from the geometry rollout in the modify panel. To save individual objects to the library, just select them in the viewport. Then select the library to which you wish to add the items. Then right click in the items list somewhere and select import objects. A new dialog will open with a number of options. For the most part, you actually won't need to change much here, and it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's take a brief look at what each one does. Create 3ds Max Scene allows you to change the name of the Max Scene to store the new library objects. You can let Forest Pack automatically name files for you, or you can specify it manually. The browser can't add objects to an existing file though, so a new Max file will be created each time you run this process, but you will be warned if you try and overwrite something. Moving down, Create Material Library will save the materials assigned to the objects to a new material library. The materials in the scenes are assigned to the objects on import, but we separate them in this way to allow users to have different matlibs for a different render should they want to. If you choose a material library name that already exists, the new materials are appended to the existing file. The Collect Assets option will move all the external files referenced by the selected objects to a Maps folder in the library location. This will help to ensure the assets never go missing and can be found by Max. And finally, the Create Thumbnails option allows you to create and assign a thumbnail captured from the viewport for each object. And that's it. To add objects to the library, just click Import, wait a few seconds, and it's done. Great, but what about if you've created a whole scatter and you'd just like to reuse it in the future? For example, let's assume we like the grass in this scene and we'd like to use it for future projects. So that's no problem either. Instead of selecting the source objects, in this case you just select the forest object and then import it in the same way by right clicking and going to import objects. Now once it's in the library, you can easily reuse it in a new scene just by loading it from the library and assigning new areas. It's really a great way to speed up your workflow by reusing systems that you've already taken the time and energy to set up. Finally, I've only shown you how to add objects to an existing library. To create a new library location and then add new objects to that, here's what you need to know. In this example, we'll add some existing assets to Forest Pack that were exported from Unreal. First of all, we'll set a location to save the libraries. This could be on your local hard drive or in a network location if you're working in a studio. So go to the Preferences and click Library Paths Add. Navigate to the location you'd like to use for your new libraries, add folders if you need to, and then click Select Folder. To name the library location, double click on it in the Name column of the Library Paths list, and then click OK. The new location will now show in the tree view on the left. Now let's add a brand new library. Select the new folder, right click, and select Create Library. Right-click the library and select Rename to give it a new name. With that done, we can add assets to the library in the same way as we've already demonstrated. Just select them in the scene and run the new Import Objects tool. Give it a few seconds and we're done. All these new assets will now be at your fingertips every time you use Forest Pack. So far more than just one new feature, the library browser has in fact been entirely rewritten from the ground up to ensure it's future proof and easy to update with new features in the future. Along the way we've added a few other usability improvements including improved selection techniques similar to Windows Explorer and an updated search tool which now allows you to type any name into the search field and the whole library is searchable. There are also filters that give you some boolean search options. We hope you enjoy these changes to your library experience. Please let us know what you think. And remember, Forest Pack 7 is out now. And if you'd like to learn more, you can check our website. <music>